Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to make screencast videos so that you can make your own flip lessons. Uh, this is a bit funny because I'm making a screencast of a screencast. Uh, it's a bit like Inception with a dream inside a dream, but we'll see how we go. Uh, the software I'm going to show you how to use is called Screencast-O-Matic. I've just typed it into Google, it's the first one that's come up here, Screencast-O-Matic. Um, so I'll take you right through the process of how to, how to get it set up and record your own video. Uh, here we can log in or sign up, but I'm not going to bother with that. I'm going straight down here where it says start recording for free and we can just get going. The first time you use it, it does take a little while, about maybe 30 seconds to download. So I will launch the free recorder and then we'll be up and running. It asks me a few questions. Uh, I will say yes, open screen recorder launcher. Um, it's downloading and like I said, that'll take 10 or 20 seconds. Um, the reason I like Screencast-O-Matic is it's a really straightforward, easy to use program. Uh, it lets, but it's also quite versatile and powerful. It, let, it can record your screen as well as your webcam at the same time, just like what you're seeing at the moment. So here it is, it's up and running. Um, so you can see this dotted line, uh, this white and black line is showing the area that will be recorded. I'm actually going to change it. I've got a whole bunch of settings in the bottom left hand corner here. So I'm going to change that first thing and tell it to record full screen. So now it's recording my entire screen, which is usually what I want to capture. We've got some other choices uh, down here. So we can record just the screen. We can record just the webcam. But I'd suggest for flip videos, it's really great if you can do both because that way you get to see um, the teacher, the teacher's face, which students respond to. In fact, research says uh, students respond better to that and they can see whatever's on your screen that you're trying to share. So I've got both selected and um, hiding over on the right here, uh, we've got my webcam. I'm running a couple of different webcams at once, so I need to um, change that to get it. Um, all right, so a bit of a funny angle there because, um, like I said, I'm running two different webcams, uh, but normally uh, that would work okay. Um, the maximum time we can record is 15 minutes using the free version. You can pay to upgrade, um, but this particular limitation of 15 minutes I think is actually a good one. If your video needs to go for longer than that, consider breaking it up into multiple videos so that students can consume them in more sort of palatable bite-sized pieces. I've already set the size to full screen. I can see my narration is working. Um, and uh, and in the free version, you can't record computer audio. I've known a number of colleagues who have um, paid for the full version. It's not particularly expensive and they really benefit from the features um, that it provides. But I'm, I'm happy with the free version and I'm a media teacher, so I use a whole bunch of other stuff as well. But for most people, I think at least when you're dipping your toe in, the free version is fine. That's it, I can hit record now and whatever's on my screen uh, will record. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to do that. It's very disconcerting having the webcam down there. It said three, two, one, then go. And now it is recording. Uh, now I'm in that inception moment where it is recording a screencast while I record a screencast. Um, so whatever's on my screen, as well as the webcam in the bottom right hand corner there is being recorded at the same time. So I'm going to show you two, uh, two methods I like for creating screencasts, uh, two sort of, of my tips, my preferred ways to create video lessons. Uh, so the first one um, that I'll show you is using PowerPoint. A lot of us have slide decks of some kind, Keynote, PowerPoint, whatever, whatever you use, Google Slides even. I'm going to show you a couple of things uh, you can do and you'll see how that looks in a screencast. So if I'm in my slideshow here and I start presenting, uh, you can see my slides. What some people like to do is use animation so that it adds a visual element while they're narrating over the top. So I can be introducing new concepts and bringing each one in as I talk about sleep disorders, then sleep phenomena, dysomnias and parasomnias. You can get creative with that. Um, some people, I think especially in Keynote, people do really creative things with the animations. Um, and if you've planned it in advance, then you can do that. For example, if I wanted to talk about the comparison of the difference of um, dysomnias and parasomnias, then I could uh, say we have dysomnias and parasomnias, and I've created that little animation in advance. Personally, I find creating um, those animations in advance takes quite a lot of time, but because I have a Microsoft Surface and there's lots of other touchscreen devices and I have this stylus, um, I could just have the slide as it appears now, 
and I can just draw straight onto the screen. So if I wanted to create a comparison of if I was, you know, comparing dysomnias and parasomnias, I just, you know, underline as I was talking about them. Or um, you can change to different uh, things as well. You can have a highlighter so that you can talk about key terms or whatever you want to do. And add that visual element to go along with um, your narration, which I think helps to keep students engaged. So that's how I would use uh, sl slides. That's how one way you could present your information. Another way that I really like to present my information is using the app OneNote. Um, there's the free version of OneNote, uh, and that's actually the one I prefer for this purpose. Um, what I love about OneNote, again, if you've got the stylus, particularly, this one doesn't work very well if you don't have a touch device. Um, what I love about OneNote is you've got this sort of big canvas, and you can just put stuff wherever you want on it, uh, and using pinch zoom, you can go in closer or move out again. So, um, so let's say for my film analysis class, I want I could zoom in here. Um, I could use the pen and I could annotate, you know, the different elements in the scene. I could talk about, you know, the relative sizes of things. I could write whatever I wanted to write. Um, normally, a lot neater than that. Um, and then when I'm done with that sort of close analysis of the image, pinch zoom to zoom out. Um, and I could then talk about this analysis that a student wrote and we could go through it and we could talk about how they've, you know, used different terminology um, uh, to illustrate the point. And again, I could be narrating over the top while, um, while adding that visual element through the annotations and using pinch and two fingers to slide around. I could introduce different parts of the lesson, which is what you're seeing here. So that's it. That's two ways that I like to create my video lessons. Um, two little tips, uh, but really I wanted to focus on Screencast-O-Matic itself. So if I uh, switch back now, okay, so I've gone back to Screencast-O-Matic and when I'm ready, I can press done. I've got a few different options. In terms of editing the video, that's uh, really only if you've got the paid version. Um, it lets you do a few handy things like you can trim off the start and end if you've made errors there. Uh, for me, I just go to save or upload. Um, and then we've got a couple of options. You can preview the video. In fact, uh, it might be worth us watching a couple of seconds of it now just to see what that looked like. I've got my sound muted so we can't hear it, but, um, but here's the video. You know, you, you saw me down there talking before um, and I can skip through and show you. That, yes, we've got the slides from PowerPoint. Uh, if I keep skipping through there. So it all looks exactly how I thought it would look. Um, it all looks pretty neat. Um, we've got the video of me and the thing. Uh, now I think even in the free version, I might be able to trim across the, um, the start and end. So that's really handy. Um, often we make errors right at the end. So you can check that, click through to the end, press play, make sure it ends where you thought it would end. Um, maybe there's a bit of a mistake there. That's probably a good spot to stop right there. And so I can drag it back and get rid of that. And when I'm ready, uh, I'm ready to save. So I've got a few options here. You can upload directly to YouTube. I usually like to save the file to my own computer so I know that I've got a copy of it. And then um, from there, I can upload to YouTube and have it available that way as well. So I'm gonna save. Uh, MP4 is a good file type. That's how most YouTube videos are. We can give it a name, I'll just call it test. Um, we choose where we want to save it to and I'll save it to this folder and when I'm done I will publish. It takes um, maybe a couple of minutes to publish the video. Uh, I'll probably fast forward through this part um, and once it is published we can uh, we can then do whatever you want with it. You can upload it to your learning management system. You can uh, save it to Google Drive and share it that way or Dropbox or Office, um, whatever that option's called. What's it called? OneDrive. Or you can even, um, or you can even uh, upload it from here to YouTube, which, as I said, is what I usually do. I just like to know that I've got my own offline backup as well. Um, I will definitely fast forward this bit. 97, 98, 99, 100%. And there we go. Um, it took maybe 
probably only one or two minutes, but um, I'm impatient and recording a video, so I found that very, uh, <laughs> very painstaking. Um, I'll browse folders just so we can uh, get to see our finished video. There it is, um, test.mp4, just like any other video file that you can play off your PC. Hopefully it's worked okay. As I said, doing a screen recording while screen recording might have um, messed around with it a bit. It also means I've got my, um, my sound muted, but that looks great. That looks just like I thought it would. Uh, one other little point is you will notice it says Screencast-O-Matic down in the left-hand corner. Pretty subtle, I think, um, uh, but that's just because it's the free uh, version. If you pay for it, you can get rid of that. I'm not too fussed by that, and I find it hard to beat free, so that's the option I'd go with at least um, while you're dipping your toes in. I hope those steps were straightforward. I hope you find that useful, and I hope it means you can get started making your very own flip lessons. Good luck with it.